regarding the, the nuclear power plant, you know, the, we have done independent tests on it precisely because uh, it was closed uh, for the reasons that are geological, that it's on a fault and uh, it's close to a volcano. I could not accept that uh, a 2.3 billion US dollar uh, plant uh, could have geologic reasons for not being operated. So I have done independent tests, which I funded myself. Mm -hmm. These are gas tests, electron resistivity, seismic refraction, just to prove or disprove there's a fault. Because if there's really a fault on, uh, if the fault is the plant is built on the fault, then it should not be operated at all. But if the fault is some distance away, then it can be engineered. The design can probably withstand that. So it's a matter of scientific testing. I have the data, I'll, I'll want it open. Anyone who will claim otherwise should disprove the data that we have. Because once the fault moves, the fault is very deep. It's uh, several meters or hundred, maybe several hundred meters, maybe to a kilometer. So any, any time it moves, if you're on top of it, what you do to evaluate these things, you know? So if you're not on the fault, how, what, what is the minimum distance that you should have? It will depend on what we call the peak ground acceleration. You know? Because when, once a fault moves, there's going to be acceleration on the ground. Now the PGA, the peak ground acceleration, you design on that. So for example, is the, is the plant, I think, designed to 0.4 G, mm -hmm. which means that it can resist seismic forces equivalent to 5 meters per second per second or 4 meters per second per second. Now, uh, the closest fault uh, to, the, to the plant, if ever it exists, is the Lubang or the Lubao fault. You know? You can see it in the satellite photographs that there is indeed a, a, a linear structure. It is probably a fault. And then since if you have a nuclear plant, you know, uh, you, uh, that will raise alarms. You know? My perspective there is that draw the fault, verify where the fault is on the ground, so we will know exactly where it is relative to the plant. Once that's done, then we can test what's the maximum earthquake that can come from that fault. And typically, the maximum earthquake is proportional to the length of the fault. First, you have to establish it's active. PVOX has not even uh, has classified, hasn't classified as active. In fact, if, in my opinion, they should be the one to have the final say on this. If there was an active fault, it's been closed for you know, 20, 30 years. Uh, it should have ex expressed itself in the surface. None. Many countries in the world have nuclear power and the ring of fire. Japan has 55 nuclear plants, it's a ring of fire. Taiwan has in, in, this, in a ring of fire. A lot of Europe, uh, you know, not necessarily the ring of fire in, 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 in faulted areas, no? Uh, you know, in, in, in uh, South America, Mexico, has uh, in the United States, in the, in the eastern side, in California, there are nuclear plants there. Okay. So uh, what's, what's the big deal about that? As long as you design it, ring of fire means only things. Ring of fire means volcanoes and earthquakes. Back to the first argument. Although the, the volcanic argument and the earthquake argument is, is a more specific application of ring of fire. BNPP is built on the eruptive and uh, sedimentary deposits of uh, Mount Natib, which is, uh, which is a, a stratovolcano, an active and, and you know, quite uh, uh, a violent uh, uh, volcano in its time. How do I know this? If you go to the sides of, uh, to, to the beach surrounding uh, BNPP, you see lahars, ancient lahars, pyroclastic flows. These are eruption products of, of a violent nature. If the volcano were active, then we have a, a strong, you know, argument to close the plant. But the two, only the two data points that determine the age of the plant is at what? It's at uh, 70,000 or 60,000 years. That's quite a, a long time. It's even older than Laguna de Bay, which is about 25,000 years. And people are not even aware that Laguna de Bay, which has produced all the adobe in Metro Manila, is a volcano. So again, you know, why use a geologic reason when you know it's weak? And this is what this is my you know this is my uh, my challenge to those who are opposed to the plant. Let's put all the evidence aside. Let's put 
ideology aside, because this is science. What's the age of the volcano? What are the chances of it erupting? For the fault, what's the distance to the fault? What's the maximum earthquake? This, these issues are measurable. There should be no emotions in this. A good example to use here in evaluating is uh, places like uh, Taiwan. Taiwan is, is a lot more tectonically active than us. But Taiwan has very, very low power rate. It's one of the most advanced countries in the world, right? And they have nuclear power. You know, as I've said, BNPP was never used. So people say it's old. It was never used. There are very few moving parts in a nuclear plant. So how can you say that it's old? You know, there are existing nuclear, there are 460 plus nuclear power plants in the world. We can get the median age of them. And then, you know, BNPP will probably be better designed than, than more than half of those. So, you know, what's the problem? And in the United States, they have far older plants that are being recommissioned and be extended and extended because nothing has happened to the plant. Okay. Now, personal as a geologist, why am I for uh, nuclear power in the Philippines? I'm a geologist, and then we look for mineral resources. We are, for example, the number one supplier of nickel in the world, and uh, nickel is used in st stainless steel manufacture, and uh, to make stainless steel, you need three elements, iron, nickel, and chrome. We have the three elements in the Philippines, but we cannot even have a steel plant because power is expensive. So we have to export 30 million tons of nickel ore to China and Japan. If power were cheaper, we could process them here. So can you imagine if we had our own steel industry? It's insulting for the Filipino that even the simplest nail has to be imported, and probably the ingredients of that came from the Philippines. This is the reason why I'm for nuclear power. Ask your relatives who are abroad, number one. What is the cost of power where you're working? Hmm? The cost of power relative to your take-home pay. Hmm? And what is the cost of power here in our country to the take-home pay? That is a very important decision. That's number one. Okay. Then, second, you can ask those uh, people in those countries, oh, uh, is there a nuclear plant uh, where you're working? Maybe you're not aware, but there's probably one. Mm -hmm. So. You feel safe working in a country with a nuclear plant, why can't you uh, feel the same here? And would you agree to the insulting thing that the Filipinos can't handle uh, technology? There are 10 million Filipinos abroad, of course. That's a mix of, uh, you know, uh, 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 seamen, maybe uh, domestic uh, workers, caregivers, but many engineers. I can tell you, if we build a good nuclear power plant with good pay, they'll come back.